So today I'm going to be talking about Guilty Gear Exard Rev 2 because I never get to talk about Exard ever really on my channel so I want an excuse to talk about it today. Now Guilty Gear Exard Rev 2 is the updated version of Guilty Gear Exard Revelator and it's the final game in the Guilty Gear series with the Exard name attached to it. The updated version of Rev 2 was announced in January of 2017. And as with fighting game updates like this, it adds new characters, it added balance changes, it gave extra story content like arcade mode scenes for characters such as Jam, Kum Hyun, Dizzy, and Raven as they didn't have any in base Revelator. Now, Rev 2 went on sale for 20 bucks for those who already had Revelator for the PS3, the PS4, and the PC, but also its own separate main release. Now, I have, I own Revelator, right? Base Revelator for my PS3. The sound quality for Revelator on PS3 is god awful. I don't know what, I don't know what they did because honestly, Arxis' PS3 games sound perfectly fine. Blaze with Central Fiction, which came after this, sounds perfectly fine. So I don't know what they did with Revelator on the PS3. Um, so because the sound quality was so bad, I freaking opted instead of getting the update, uh, instead of getting the update to Rev 2, I just just bought Rev 2 all over because I, I, I just wanted a better sound quality. So I bought Rev 2 on my PS4 once I had a working PS4 to play it on. So yeah, that's my little deal with Rev 2 right there. Now, I felt that it would be appropriate to talk about the previous versions of Guilty Gear Exert. And we're gonna start with Guilty Gear Exert Sign. Now, my previous history with the Exert series began with Sign on the PS3. And I got it during a time where I haven't played Guilty Gear in forever outside of goofing around with spin-off games such as Guilty Gear Itsuka for, what, I think PS2? Yeah, Guilty Gear Itsuka for PS2, Guilty Gear Dust Strikers for the DS, and Judgment for the PSP. That was a time where I was just screwing around with, like, spin-off games. I also played uh, Petite for the Wonderswan, but I'm not even going to talk about that right now. Uh, I fell off games such as Guilty Gear 2 Overtour for the Xbox 360 because I didn't really have, my, my Xbox my 360 didn't really function well enough and I didn't enjoy Overtour, and I haven't played an actual mainline Guilty Gear game since XX, and that was during like the Wii port of Exit Core Plus. The Wii port, the one that had you play the game with the awful motion controls. I made a whole ass video about that. Like the game sucks so bad with the motion controls. XX is not meant to be played on the Wii like that. You can be played with you know, regular controls, but yeah, I also have the PSP. I also have a PSP port of um, Accent Core Plus, which works. Also bought the Switch port of <laughs> of XX Accent Core Plus R, which I love playing. Anyway, anyway, uh, XR Sign was a damn good reintroduction back to Guilty Gear, and it even introduced me to unforgettable characters such as Badman, Ramlethal Valentine, L Felt Valentine, and Leo White Fang. Though I never bought L Felt or Leo's DLC. Because I knew for a fact that this game was going to get a update sooner or later, so I held off on buying those characters. I knew for a fact, and Guilty Gear has its history, because freaking Guilty Gear XX has like like six, seven different versions of itself, right? So I'm like, okay, fine. I'm not going to buy Elfel or Leo's DLC, because I know, I know they're going to release another version of this game. Now, I personally didn't play XR Sign on launch or anything like that. I had managed to get a copy for myself about several months before Revelator was announced, so that's how my history was. I didn't get a chance to get it on launch like everyone else did, so I didn't get to enjoy the, you know, the boom of a Guilty Gear game coming back until, like, Revelator came out. Now, it was nice to have Guilty Gear in English, because the only other game with a Guilty Gear dub at a time was Guilty Gear 2 Overtour, and that was a very controversial experience that no one really played. I, I'm not going to say that the game is terrible. Overtour is not exactly a terrible game, but I want to see someone look me in the eye and tell me that they played the game because there's barely people who played the game. I think what killed Overtour really was it was a different style from Guilty Gear and it was exclusive to the Xbox, which I'm surprised they chose a Japanese game to be exclusive to the Xbox. They could have put it to the PS3 and maybe got more sales, but for some reason, they chose the Xbox, and I, I, mean, I didn't look up exactly why, because there's probably a specific reason why Daisuke and his team chose the Xbox 360, but honestly, it doesn't really matter now. I mean, Overture is on, the, uh, on Steam now, so everyone can access to it. I'm just saying that putting it on the PS3 could have also helped them get some money back, because I feel like people would have bought Overture on the PS3 if it came out on there. I kind of feel like it would, because the Xbox 360 doesn't really have a market in 
in Japan, so they kind of just shot themselves in the foot with Overture. They made a Japanese game, a game that deviated a lot from the Guilty Gear style for the Xbox 360. It was like it was a recipe f- just failed, and it sucks that they kind of wasted the dub on it. Really, they 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 the dub voices were fine for Overture, but they kind of wasted the dub on it. So yeah, but I'm, I'm moving away from Overture now. There's no point we talk about that no more. So a while after XArt's sign had came out was Guilty Gear XArt Revelator. It was announced in arcades in 2015 and then came out in 2016. Now I was pretty hyped for this game. I didn't have a chance to get my hype build up for uh, XArt sign because I didn't know it existed until a little bit after. I think, uh, god damn it, when was it? I think when Chrome Phantasma Extend was announced, that's when I knew about Guilty Gear XArt sign. That's that's too late. Um, but anyway, I was pretty hyped for Revelator. And it was a huge struggle to find a, ga- a, a physical copy of this game for the PS3, which I still have to this day. Because this game really, you know, I mean, PS4 copies existed, but I didn't have a working PS4 at the time, so I had no choice but to get a PS3 version of the game. It took me about, and I'm not lying here, about six goddamn months until I was finally able to cop a physical PS3 copy of Revelator. And as I mentioned before, yeah, the, the sound quality was like garbage, but the game still, the game still function. The game still work. It still function. It's just Guilty Gear is obviously known for its music, and if that sucks, like if that takes a you know quality, make it sound muffled and everything, that's when you have a problem. But the changes from Revelator, from sorry, from Sign to Revelator was actually pretty amazing. You got obvious new characters. You got a new fishing mode for snacking in-game items. You got a nice little digital figure mode to play with the models, a brand new story mode, etc., etc. It was nice to see characters like Jam, Crado, Barry, uh, Johnny, and Raven from Overtour to make it into this game. And then later down the line, there will be DLC announced that will bring in characters such as Dizzy and a new character in the form of Kum Haehyun. And while I'm not really a big fan of Haehyun, it's nice to see that, you know, a new character, a new inventive character had made in. Because, you know, when you think about the new characters introduced for Revelator, they're all characters that have already been in the series, right? They've, they've already been here. You know, Jim and Johnny were already characters that have already been in Guilty Gear before. Raven was a character from Overtour. Dizzy was already a character. So seeing Haehyun be a brand new character at DLC was pretty nice. Even though I'm not a fan, fan of Haven, it's nice to see them here. Now granted, they were already in the story mode as characters, but still it's nice to see them playable, even if I'm not a fan of them. So now we reach Guilty Gear XR Rev 2, and it brought back Biken, which is just pretty much blew up the internet. Biken was like one of the best characters they could have brought back with the redesign, because she looks so damn good in, in Rev 2, like really. And they brought back a character in the. Um, they brought they br- they brought in a new playable character in the form of Answer. Now Answer was already a character already in the story mode for Revelator. He's Chip's secretary, so he's not exactly a new character, but he's a new character playable wise. Now Rift Two didn't add too much outside of what I mentioned before. You know, balance changes to the characters. They changed the camera dynamic when you start a battle. You know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera, and added the game's new HUD, which is you know they changed from orange to green. Now, if you got the physical PS4 copy of the game, it bundled all the DLC together, which I found really unfair, considering how hard it is to get a physical copy of this game. Like, if you bought the game digitally, there's still DLC. You know, I mean, having DLC for Rev 2 is so dumb to me because this is the final updated version of the XR series, and it should have had everything packed in. Hell, I believe that it should have had the story modes from sign packed into this game. I mean, I don't know how long that, that big that space would have been, but considering that these games, um, the Guilty Gear games have like the saves, the story save stuff separated from the main stuff. I'm surprised that Rev, um, Rev 2 doesn't have like a thing where it's just like, it's combined all the story modes together. I know Revelator is a different game from sign, but still. But yeah, it, it kind of sucks that everything is not, you know, bundled together. I, Cause when I bought the uh, digital copy, I was like, well, there's some voice stuff changes. Like, uh, to be fair, DLC is mostly just colors, avatar stuff, and system forces. But I would have wanted that, you know. And it kind of sucks it's not all bundled together. You can get all that stuff, but it's like you know you gotta play the fishing mini game and RNG, and you already know how that is. So yeah, even if you copy if you copy digitally, you're not gonna have everything. But if you have a physical PS4 copy, you pretty much got everything. Now I can't really talk about the gameplay of Guilty Gear XR because gameplay. Talking about gameplay is not my expertise. I suck at talking about how a fighting game should play like. All I can say 
in my personal experience, is that the game plays good. That's all I can say. It plays good. Everyone should play it. But everybody's moved on the strive now, so... Whatever, whatever people want to go back to Revelator, like Rev 2, like I do, I like to go at this game occasionally just to, you know, goof around with some shit, you know? But talk about the fighting game parts is not my expertise, and that goes for story as well. In the XR series, it's where Daisuke really doubled down on trying to push the series forward narrative-wise, especially, to, especially compared to the extremely confusing and fragmented story of XX. Because XX was a weird, weird way of trying to tell its story. But you can't see seeds of the story being planted in Overtour, right? Like, it's, like Overtour took a story, like, it took its story seriously. Well, seriously enough that you can take a Guilty Gear story. But the point is, you know, Rev of XR was a attempt for Daisuke to make more story. And I, I believe that's nice to see. The story is separated off in, like, this movie style. It's not like it's not like a visual novel like Blaze Blue, but it's more like a movie where there's no fights at all. All and that has become really controversial between people. Some people don't care and just let like the story plays out. Some people would rather have fights in the middle. Me personally, I would have liked a couple of fights or some in the middle. You know, just just for just for a little variety. But I feel like it's okay in this movie format because like it's not interrupting with fights. And on top of that, it makes it feel more like a movie instead of a like you know a bunch of broken up fights in one. So you know, it's not that you know big of a deal in my personal opinion. But your mileage may vary depending on how much you care about the Guilty Gear plot. Music is also something else that I find really hard to talk about because, I mean, this is Daisuke Ishiwatari we're talking about here, and I honestly have very little to say about XR's OST that you already can't hear for yourself. Like, all I can say is that the sound quality has definitely improved since Overtour. Now, keep in mind that ever since Overtour, Daisuke really hasn't done anything outside of that. Well, he has because it's Blaze Blue, but Blaze Blue sounded music music quality for Blaze Blue sounded pretty much like Overtours. But once he did Hardcore Uprising in 2011, that's when you hear a drastic the change in what Daisuke's music sounds like. His music sounds a lot better sound wise and composition wise. And then you know that would go on to Chrono Phantasma, and then that would go on to Guilty Gear Fast Edge XT, then Guilty Gear X Art Sign. Now. XR Revelator in Returns of Music was later updated where you can fight battles with tracks such as Birthday Train. Uh, Birthday Train is a song that played in Guilty Gear. Uh, was it Guilty Gear XR Sign? It was like during like this happy moment where like Sin, Ramlethal, and L felt were like you know goofing around having their happy anime moments. Uh, but yeah, it became, you can fight against you can fight to Birthday Train and it just became a meme, which is like freaking hilarious. And it actually carried over to uh, it actually carried over. To strive, which I find hilarious. Um, there's the theme. Of, there's, there's the, you can fight through the theme song of Sign, known as Heavy Day. You can fight to Big Blast Sonic, and you can also fight to the songs um, of Arc System Wars 25th Anniversary, known as Six Black Heavens Guns. There's all, there are also tracks from Vast Edge in the game now, such as Storyteller, that actually plays in the story mode, uh, Dice, and Shotgun and Head, which I thought that was so sick that you can actually fight against these tracks that were locked away to Vast Edge. That's actually pretty cool. And you can actually fight against them in battle, which is actually always good. Now, Guilty Gear Exert Sign and subsequent games after that allowed you to listen to old songs from previous Guilty Gear games that related to a character. For example, Soul gets tracks like Keep Yourself Alive of 2 from XX and Keep Yourself Alive 3 from Overtour, or Eno gets Kage Matsuri from XX or The Midnight Carnival from XX. Now, the original release of XR Sign, which only had tracks that went back to Guilty Gear X, it was only lim the X tracks were only limited to, to No Mercy, which was the theme for Soul and Kai back in Guilty Gear X, and, um, and Fatal Duel. I think it was the, I think Fatal Duel was the same character versus theme from Guilty Gear X. Uh, it had tracks from XX and Overtour. But around the time Revelator came out, certain tracks from Guilty Gear Isaka came into the mix. Uh, there was also arranged tracks from the Guilty Gear Complete Sound Box, and there was also songs introduced from the original Guilty Gear. So all that made it in uh, to Revelator alongside the other tracks, which I always thought that was pretty cool. The Guilty Gear Isaka tracks seemed kind of obvious, but hearing tracks to the arranged soundtracks from the Guilty Gear Complete Sound Box, like, uh, like for example, uh, March of the Wicked King, uh, the, the, the actual arranged version from the Complete Sound Box, which is actually, it was hearing that was actually really, really cool. Now, in Guilty Gear 1, they only limited a couple, they only, I think they only had like one track from Guilty Gear 1, and I think that was uh, Black Soul, which was the Zotto's theme from back then. 
Um, I think I think Enslaved's Glory was in there too as well. But for the life of me, I just cannot remember like the half the music that was in there. Look, if, if if off the top of my head while making this video, trying to remember those songs is just pretty much impossible because like I have to like boot up the game in order to figure it out. But if I remember correctly from Guilty Gear One, they only had one song, which was actually um, which was actually Black Soul, which is kind of sucks because I felt like they could have added more songs in there from the other Guilty Gear games, which is kind of bummed me out because like, there's some other songs that from Guilty Gear One I would have liked to see. Now, granted, some of the arranged soundtracks uh, they essentially replaced the original ones that were in there. For example, Conclusion was like I think Ka Soul and Kai's original versus theme. Uh, Identified Child was also May's theme. And so I get why they added Black Soul, because Black Soul didn't have an arranged version of it, so they added just a straight up one from Guilty Gear 1. And I could get that. But still, I, I would have heard, loved to hear some old song, like really old ass songs from like Guilty Gear 1. I just, I personally would have liked that, but I also like the fact that they added the arranged ones as well. Now, now that these tracks are still tied to the characters, you aren't going to be hearing songs that have nothing to do with the characters that you've already playable in Guilty Gear XR. For example, someone like Testament, right? Testament is not a playable character, so you're not going to hear any tracks like A Fixed Idea, which was his song from Guilty Gear 1, or you're not going to hear Bloodstained Lineage, uh, which was his theme for XX. You're not going to hear any of those songs in this game because Testament isn't a playable character. But I still like the amount of songs they even put in. And when Rev 2 came out, they gave you the ability to list, uh, to fight against songs like Momentary Life, which was by Steve from XX because she's a playable, uh, sorry, uh, XX because she's a char playable character now. You can also listen to um, Break a, wait, was it, uh, Break a Spell. Yeah. You can also listen to Break a Spell, which was the opening theme for Guilty Gear XR Rev 2. I'm kind of bummed out that you couldn't listen to the song uh, NSFW. That's the ending theme, the arcade ending theme for Guilty Gear XR Rev 2, and I'm, I'm amazed that you can't fight against that theme, which it sounds like a battle theme that could work, but you know, I guess not. Whatever, but you know, it's, it's still, still a weird thing. But yeah, that's pretty much that on the music front. Now, do I have complaints about this game? Yeah, there's some I do have. Uh, for one, I don't know why they dropped the dub from Guilty Gear XR sign and then like didn't give any other characters dub in Revelator and then Rev 2. I personally think that was a dumbass choice. I don't know why. And it kind of rolled into Blade Blue Central Fiction not getting a dub. And God, it was it was a shit time from 2015 to 2016. I swear to God, Arc is just ugh. But yeah. But anything, uh, anything else I gotta complain about? Not really. Honestly, um, I think my minor complaints are mostly just gallery related stuff. I don't like the fishing in this game all that much, but honestly, I would take it night and day. It's night and day compared to freaking Guilty Gear Strides. Like, oh, like, oh my god. Like, Guilty Gear Strides with that damn lobby avatar shit. Like, it effectively ruined the fishing minigame. Like, you can't even grind out all the music unless you just grind out so many online battles and shit like that. Ugh. There's also the fact that colors, like, a color set in this game costs like 10,000 world dollars, which I find very dumb. You know, some colors in previous, like, even Blazewood games didn't cost this much. Like, holy shit. And because of the fishing game, you most likely just unlock ones you already had. And I'm like, oh, there's no point in me doing that again. You know, just grind it through fishing. And, you know, eh. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, these are minor complaints, right? It's, it's all bullshit. These are all minor complaints. I think another thing I would have liked for this game to have was like, you can unlock shit in like the story, like in the gallery that weren't like, you know, uh, like, for example, I wish you could unlock like the voice, uh, like the voice lines for characters. Like, if I wanted to have a Johnny voice line, it's like, oh yeah, I unlocked Johnny's and then he can be the announcer. Like, I wish you could do that. Arxis games just do not want to do that. Arxis just does not want you to put their announcer voices in a gallery. That's what, that's pisses me off. Uh, you gotta unlock it through the freaking fishing minigame or just buy the DLC. And I'm like, no, I'm not buying DLC for freaking voices. Either I want that shit or not. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's all really minor. All my complaints are really minor. Like, it's not really a big deal, uh, but yeah, I, I think another, like, oh yeah, another complaint I got, uh, freaking Elfelt's XR sign costume for God for sake. It took me, funny enough, it took me three years to unlock that costume between two v different versions of Guilty Gear XR Revelator. And I finally, it took me what, like, like months ago just to unlock this costume after three years of grinding the fishing minigame. Like, ugh, that, that sucks balls, man. But yeah, I think that's it. That's really all the complaints I got. There's really no big. Th this game is pretty damn good.
and I freaking enjoy it a lot. So, you know, without further ado, I'll see you all next time. Peace out, everyone, and I hope you all have a great day.